Hi again, everyone. So um, yes, today's uh, lecture is about using the modern technology in uh, project management office or is in just like office work. So um, uh, the title of the lecture today is uh, Data Modeling Behind Power Platform. And uh, I will talk uh, about how can we uh, use modern technology to automate um, day-to-day uh, -day office office tasks so uh, the agenda for today is uh, first we will uh, briefly cover relational databases in IT industry uh, so we will um, get familiar with, with what is a relational database and with uh, with the key uh, attribute I will not go into too much detail since uh, the, the intent of this um, presentation today is not to scare, scare you out with uh, with IT terminology but rather to introduce you to uh, to some theory and also to the practical application of um, of this theory in in daily office work so uh, the second uh, item on the agenda would be to review uh, top cloud provider uh, relational database offerings uh, then we will cover uh, most popular relational database like uh, solutions for office needs, such as SharePoint, for example. Um, then we will discuss uh, business intelligence software, such as uh, Microsoft Excel and Power BI. Uh, then we will briefly touch Microsoft Power Platform. Uh, and also um, some samples of automations that can be done in office uh, work, which are of course not limited to uh, the examples which will be presented today during the lecture, but still just to give you an idea of what, what can we do with this technology in uh, daily office work as opposed to um, for example, doing things manually in in old-fashioned way in Excel, for example. So um, I would like to start uh, with uh, a relational uh, database uh, definition, and it's really it's really important that you um, guys understand uh, the key uh, the key attribute of relational uh, database which is like a primary key and foreign key. So what does it mean? Uh, on the screen, um, you see two tables. So in the first table, there are names. So Anna, Mariah, James, and Brian, and uh, also IDs. And uh, ID is actually uh, most important in relational databases since uh, all the mappings uh, against other tables in such a database um, is um, they are done uh, based on ids so uh, in the second table you have uh, basically a table of tasks which are for example listen to music uh, wash uh, dishes watch tv uh, cook food uh, by Christmas gifts. And uh, you can see that uh, there is a column ID, which uh, basically says uh, which ID in, in, uh, in uh, this table uh, a record has, it means primary key. And there is a task owner ID, which in this case is a mapping against a name table. Um, and uh, task owner ID in this case is, is a, a foreign key in a, a relational database table. So uh, by taking a look at this table, um, for example, what does it mean uh, task owner ID uh, free? Uh, in this case, we can understand, so we can uh, take a look at the first table. So we see that uh, James, is ID free. So it means that uh, listen to music is a task for James. So wash dishes is again a task for James. Um, watch TV is a task for uh, um, Maria. Uh, and then we have cook food as a task for Anna and uh, um, 
by Christmas gifts is a task for Brian. So this is just like a very, uh, very simple um, example with two uh, two very simple tables of what uh, what is like a key um, attribute of a relational uh, database. Uh, in uh, like in the real database, of course, there are like uh, multiple uh, columns and multiple tables, but uh, they are nevertheless using the same principle as uh, as you see on the screen. So this would mean primary key and foreign key mapping. Of course, uh, um, like there may be like um, foreign key mappings to not just one table, but to several tables uh, in uh, like uh, again against one table, so to say. Uh, but um, uh, what does uh, this technology bring? So this is not uh, by any means a new technology. Uh, like the roots, uh, the roots are in the 80s. We will discuss uh, this a bit later um, during the presentation today. Um, so and the, the roots for this technology is, is like Microsoft SQL Server, which was uh, established uh, back in 1989. Uh, so these key principles are not new, uh, but so going uh, going to the next slide. Um, yes, as you can see, uh, so Microsoft uh, SQL Server was the first uh, relational database which was uh, developed uh, back in 1989, and this is the most well known and recognizable uh, relational database. Uh, the most uh, popular database, however, is uh, its um, open source alternative, which is uh, MySQL. Um, and then we also have uh, MariaDB, which is just a, basically uh, a configuration of MySQL database, and uh, PostgreSQL, uh, which is the most advanced relational database. So these are those four uh, big players in IT industry. And uh, what, uh, what is actually the benefit of all these databases? Well, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, you pr you're probably using um, like a lot of cloud services, uh, such as streaming services, for example, Netflix, uh, Spotify, even, even uh, such uh, like food delivery applications uh, as a uh, bolt food or vault uh, so the in fact uh, when you're using these uh, applications uh, they interact with databases and uh, most most likely they use like a connection to relational databases so in fact um, um, despite this technology is not new why it is uh, relevant right now uh, and becoming even more relevant um, because uh, if if previously uh, all these um, like uh, database servers were running on premise that means that you had to ma maintain infrastructure so you had to maintain uh, your own server uh, had to install uh, updates and so on uh, if that was the case uh, previously, then what happens uh, now is that um, relational base databases are mostly uh, used in cloud environments. Uh, and uh, what 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 uh, what is a cloud environment in general? So cloud environment means that uh, um, IT infrastructure is uh, offered as a service. For example, um, like uh, on this slide, you see. Uh, key relational database offerings from top three uh, cloud providers, which are Microsoft, uh, Azure, uh, Amazon Web Services, and Google Cloud. Um, so, but in general, cloud means that uh, you should not maintain uh, any infrastructure. Uh, basically, you, you just pay either Microsoft, uh, Amazon, or Google. Um, request a service and then uh, the actual maintenance is performed by them. So all these databases are hosted on, on a very powerful server, which um, 
which basically um, handles requests in in like a few milliseconds uh, regarding of uh, the complexity because of um, like very low latency levels and also um, very powerful internet connection used in uh, in uh, cloud uh, cloud solution offerings and the benefits of running uh, databases on on cloud is uh, mainly that you um, you should not uh, care about uh, such things as uh, if you are using for example platform as a service uh, solution which is the uh, most popular one it means that basically microsoft is responsible for um, installing updates uh, for uh, like making it uh, work uh, and uh, your your responsibility is basically to just understand what kind of uh, database do you need set it up and uh, and uh, just use it uh, without uh, without needing to care about um, actually maintaining uh, infrastructure needed for running these databases uh, that together with uh, internet connect connection speed of course uh, gives uh, this uh, by any means not new technology like uh, a new um, uh, like a new uh, perspective and a new uh, room for for development. But so these uh, four um, four uh, uh, databases which I'm mentioning now, so th these are used in uh, in IT applications mainly. So these are very uh, professional uh, professional databases which um, which are designed uh, for for applications. Uh, but if we are talking about uh, office needs, and our presentation today is mainly about um, how do we use uh, um, relational database-like technology in, in office. So if we are talking about uh, office, then we have uh, three, uh, three main uh, solutions, which uh, can basically do a very similar job. Uh, with the only exception that, uh, of course, uh, they are much slower and they are not really meant for handling uh, the same, uh, like the same type of work or the same amount of requests as uh, as uh, their um, big brothers, so to say, from from IT industry. So, and these uh, relational database-like solution, which uh, which I would like to mention, are SharePoint lists. First of all, and this is uh, probably the most uh, well-known um, solution, since SharePoint is um, is actually available starting from early, uh, like um, starting from 2001. So it means that uh, already 20 years, but uh, uh, in the new version of SharePoint, of course, um, there there was, um, especially in the newest version in SharePoint 20, uh, 2019, there were quite a few updates released, which uh, allow to uh, really use uh, SharePoint as a uh, like uh, as a very convenient office collaboration tool, including uh, using uh, relational database-like functionality through. Uh, lookup column type. So it means that you can map one table to another, just as you do uh, on the SQL server. And you can actually utilize SharePoint as a um, as a like a mini mini server for relational database. Uh, so that is about SharePoint. And then we have a Dataverse solution, which um, which is uh, like um, cornerstone of uh, Microsoft Power Platform, um, a central pillar, and it has uh, two versions. Um, so one is uh, Dataverse for Teams, uh, which is integrated with uh, Microsoft Teams environment. And this is a light version of the, of the big Dataverse. And the second one is, uh, is um, like the full version. And it is meant for uh, designing 
uh, applications in Power Apps. So, and Power Apps, uh, we'll talk about it uh, a bit later. So, Power Apps is uh, a no, uh, low code or no code um, application development platform, also uh, developed by Microsoft. Uh, so, in this case, uh, I would say that um, for for common office tasks, uh, SharePoint lists will be used much more frequently since uh, the main purpose of Dataverse is uh, um, like to be uh, like as a data storage for um, application development. And if you are uh, developing applications in, in Power Apps, then you will most likely use Dataverse. Other than that, uh, SharePoint will be uh, the most popular uh, solution. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, there is not much of a difference actually, but of course SharePoint is is uh, much slower. So if you need to maintain a database of uh, multiple thousands uh, of rows, uh, SharePoint will not be um, like your solution. Probably it is best to then go for Dataverse. But if you just need uh, to create some like uh, lists which uh, contain like let's say 100 or 1000 rows SharePoint will fit uh, perfectly fine and uh, SharePoint is also easier to easier to implement because um, normally like in, in modern uh, office work um, almost everyone is using uh, Microsoft Teams as a, as a collaboration platform and SharePoint is integrated with Microsoft Teams. So um, therefore it, it is like um, easier, easier to create uh, like um, databases in SharePoint. Also it's, it's uh, web-based and uh, you, you can export it to Excel. So for simple office work, SharePoint is usually uh, what you would normally use. Dataverse is, is for advanced databases and for, for cases where you need to integrate databases with, uh, with applications. So that was about uh, database uh, solutions. Uh, um, later on, uh, I will also show some examples of SharePoint lists, how they look like, uh, some real, real examples. Um, okay, so going to next topic uh, and the next topic is um, business intelligence software so we discussed uh, databases and databases are used to store data but uh, to transform data into something uh, like usable or like into actionable insights we uh, would need a business intelligence uh, software and uh, the big players here are uh, nowadays uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, Power BI, uh, Tableau, and Click. So during this uh, presentation, we'll mostly focus on, on Microsoft Excel and Power BI. Uh, and yes, uh, Microsoft Excel nowadays is not just, uh, just an Office application. In fact, um, the concept of Microsoft Excel, Excel has changed uh, dramatically. And um, nowadays it is uh, considered primar primarily as a uh, business intelligence application, not uh, just an office tool it was previously. So that would mean that uh, the main purpose and application of Microsoft Excel is to process uh, data from uh, external collections process uh, data also from internal collections uh, through through power query engine and to uh, to actually transform data uh, and a large large like amount of data into something actionable um, by using uh, business intelligence um, technologies uh, and Power BI, so the, what's the difference between Excel and Power BI? Well, Power BI, uh, Microsoft um, uh, portrays is a, it as a tool for visualizing data. So that would mean that, uh, so if you, with Excel, you can create like automation templates for preparing textual data, such as like, uh, for example, like um, input for uh, some, 
financial or invoicing automation, let's say, uh, like text. But uh, Power BI is mainly meant to actually visualize the data and deliver visual reports out of it. Um, for example, you, you may uh, use a database uh, as a data source and then um, prepare uh, prepare uh, an application in Power BI uh, without writing actually any code uh, for for visualizing it. So you may use just uh, like existing visuals, uh, both uh, standard and um, and custom ones to to visualize your data in a meaningful um, way. And uh, then this data can be viewed uh, directly by by uh, project uh, managers, for example, or for or by other stakeholders. And this happens not by as as it was previously by just distributing some uh, standalone files. So as as previously, like Excel was the main tool. You know, like the common approach was to just send uh, send Excel files to people who wanted to see uh, visuals. So nowadays it doesn't work like that. Uh, nowadays, uh, basically, you just set um, a model of the data in Power BI, then set uh, automatic refresh, and actually, uh, then stakeholders uh, can access uh, such reports directly by uh, opening a link and also see the, the latest information in, in the Power BI report. OK, um, yes. Um, we discussed that Excel uh, nowadays uh, has turned into a business intelligence application. But um, uh, here on this slide, you see those uh, four, I would say, main, main technologies which are behind this transformation. So the first one is actually pivot tables. And pivot tables are available in Excel starting from 1993. So it's the most, uh, I would say, uh, the so to say oldest uh, business intelligence solution available in Excel or business intelligence future. Um, then we had an important milestone in Excel 20, uh, 2007 ver version um, where we saw um, Excel tables uh, being introduced. And uh, the main difference of uh, Excel tables versus Excel range is that it uh, utilizes a much more simple syntax. Uh, it means that you don't need to refer to cells as it was previously in Excel, but you can refer to uh, column headers, which uh, makes it uh, much more easy to understand complex formulas. And uh, later on also Microsoft developed um, developed uh, DAX syntax. So uh, structured reference formulas in Excel are kind of similar to uh, DAX syntax in, which is mainly used uh, in Power BI. Of course, it is also available in Excel Power Pivot, but I would say that the main application of DAX syntax is in, in fact Power BI. Uh, yes, uh, but then last but not least in Excel 2016, which was just uh, six years ago, uh, we got uh, two uh, main technologies uh, being introduced in um, in Excel, two main uh, BI technologies, namely Power Query and Power Pivot. And what is Power Query? So Power Query is a, a graphical user interface based uh, data processing and cloud connectivity engine behind both, both Excel Power and Power BI. So it means that uh, that's basically the same tool, which is uh, in both integrated in both Excel and Power BI. There are some differences. Uh, for example, in Excel, you, you can use also internal queries. So it means you can query data from tables which are available in your a worksheet, which you cannot do in Power BI, but also in Power BI, there are a few, few other features available which are not uh, in Excel. But uh, normally, uh, I would say that 80% of uh, Power Query is the same in both Excel and Power BI. So if you are you, like 
if you are generating uh, external queries, it is possible to copy and paste uh, the formula to uh, from Excel to Power BI, and it will work. Um, and Power Query may be used for a variety of data transformation operations, uh, starting from uh, very simple to uh, very complex. So, uh, what what uh, what are the use cases? The use cases are like first and foremost loading data from external sources, such as, for example, a SharePoint list or SQL Server, or it can be just uh, another Excel workbook located uh, on SharePoint. And then what Power Query uh, can do, it can transform data very efficiently. And uh, the main benefit that, that is that you don't really need to write any code in it. So you can just click around, um, do some, like implement some actions. And um, so you don't really need to, to understand the, the code. So of course it's beneficial that you understand what is written actually uh, in, uh, like in M formula uh, code in advanced editor, but uh, it is not needed for it to work. So you can, uh, so you can work uh, with Power Query even without writing any any formulas. Actually, which which makes some operations even even easier than it is with uh, standard Excel formulas, since it, in formulas you you need to write them, but in Power Query. Well, sometimes you don't need to actually write anything. You just need to do some operations in graphical user interface. And then uh, Power Pivot. So Power Pivot is um, a data aggregation tool, which is similar to pivot tables. But what's the difference is that you can uh, visualize uh, data, not just, uh, or not visualize, but rather display data, not just from one data source, but uh, from uh, multiple tables. And uh, you can do so by utilizing data modeling or relationship uh, mapping functionality in Excel, which is uh, similar to Power BI. And then uh, moving, moving forward to Power BI. So in Power BI, uh, there are also like, uh, I would say four main uh, technologies, um, just as in Excel, like the connectivity and transformation is done through Power Query. Uh, then we have uh, data analysis expressions uh, or DAX, you know, which is used as a formula and measure uh, language in Power BI, and it is used to um, yes, yeah, so, so to uh, perform complex uh, calculations or measurements uh, in Power BI reports. Uh, then we have uh, visuals. So visuals are basically applications which are integrated uh, in Power BI. And uh, so there are um, about 20 visuals which are available by default in Power BI uh, from Microsoft, but also it is possible to download custom uh, visuals from Microsoft App Source, uh, which provides uh, almost limitless possibilities for developers to create custom visuals for business-specific needs by using Python or R programming languages. So it means that uh, we have a large collection already available in, in Microsoft uh, App Source, but uh, going forward, we'll have even more applications which are able to visualize uh, data. Uh, and Power BI service, uh, this is a very important component. So Power BI service basically ensures that you can um, view your reports by opening either a browser or a web. Uh, so you, you don't really need to just like, uh, as a, as it was previously distribute some offline files across stakeholders, but instead you can share a link and uh, the visuals will be seen either, either in a web browser or in a mobile app. Uh, Power BI service is hosted on the Microsoft Azure Cloud. So it uses uh, Microsoft uh, Azure Cloud uh, infrastructure as well. 
okay so next uh, next topic is about the microsoft power platform so microsoft what is microsoft power platform um uh, microsoft power platform is a, a, actually like an ecosystem of uh, several microsoft tools namely uh, power bi power apps power automate and uh, power vir virtual agents um what do they have in common is that uh, all these tools are hosted on Microsoft Azure. Uh, and uh, also, um, like they have, uh, if you're if you are uh, like designing um, integrated solutions, then, then they would uh, most likely use uh, Dataverse as a data source uh, also, which would uh, then combine combine the whole ecosystem together. Um, but uh, so with all these tools, Dataverse is not the only option, of course, to use. Uh, so you may use uh, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI together with uh, SharePoint as well. So, and uh, also in, 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 uh, in case of Power BI, it can work with, uh, with uh, like different data sources. So you can actually um, load data from from uh, SharePoint lists, from Excel files, from um, different uh, relational databases such as uh, SQL Server. Um, the same with Power Apps and Power Automate, actually. So uh, if you're using uh, connectors, you may connect to different systems to, to get the data. For example, you can have a connector which uh, just um, loads data from your enterprise resource planning solution um, such as for example sap uh, into into power apps um, yes so um, as mentioned below so uh, before uh, power bi is uh, used uh, to analyze and visualize data from different data sources uh, then power apps are used to build to build power, uh, powerful mobile apps for internal use by the organization. And there are actually three types of power apps, uh, canvas apps, uh, model driven apps and portal apps. If you are interested more about power apps then you could uh, browse it on the internet. Uh, of course, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, description of how, how it works. We'll not go into too much detail on power apps um, today, but uh, What's the business business use of it is uh, that, uh, well, first of all, creating forms which can be submitted by uh, by stakeholders. Uh, then we can build uh, portals, we should say websites with uh, also uh, authentication functionality and uh, model driven apps. Uh, that means uh, uh, like almost uh, same functionality as SharePoint lists, uh, just more more advanced. Uh, Power Automate, uh, on the other hand, is used to design um, automated workflows. Um, and uh, use cases are, for example, if you need, uh, based on a certain action, to do some, um, some other action. So, for example, if you create a new entry in a, in a SharePoint list, you you may want like uh, an email to be sent to a certain uh, address, email address. Um, then you could uh, create a Power Automate flow, which would basically do this action. So whenever you create a certain uh, entry on the, in a SharePoint list, uh, there will be an email sent to to an email address which you de define. Um, there are, of course, uh, many, many other other uh, functions which uh, Power Automate is capable of doing. So this is just an example. And then uh, Power Virtual Agents. So uh, Power Virtual Agents is used to develop uh, flexible, flexible chatbots that can communicate with external customers. Uh, that would say, for example, if, um, if you are writing certain Question as a customer, if you um, are, uh, if you developed Power Virtual Agents so, uh, solution, then uh, like this uh, automated solution could uh, identify what the client is asking um, about and provide 
some automated answer uh, without uh, needing to involve employees. So, uh, for example, if if uh, like a customer wants to uh, get information about um, opening times of a certain store, uh, basically. Whenever he types in a question that, uh, yeah, so please, please, let's say, um, let me know opening times of, of that and that store, uh, Power Virtual Agents will, will then be able to, to answer this question without needing to um, involve uh, human resources if, you, if it is set up properly. So this allows to save, uh, save, uh, uh, of course, uh, money that you need to spend on, on human, human workforce. So a lot of these uh, questions uh, can be uh, actually answered by virtual agents, which are like uh, asked by the customer. So uh, you, you don't need to, do, to spend that much money on customer support service if you are maintaining power virtual agents. Uh, yes, so, um, uh, and now I would like to just uh, quickly, quickly show some real, real use cases, how, how uh, uh, this technology that we are talking about can be used in, in uh, office, uh, in daily office work. Um, so, for example, um, it can be used to provide input for electronic invoice delivery. So, nowadays, uh, um, invoicing and uh, uh, related financial processes are, are very complicated, so they contain a lot of uh, different details due to the fact that uh, invoicing is uh, more and more done electronically, uh, but also customers request uh, invoicing to be very detailed. So how can you uh, do it is that you could create a data model uh, and a relational database to store data. And then you could use Excel to, for example, produce input, automated input for uh, project uh, ERP system, which would uh, then um, generate, actually generate the invoices. Um, then also uh, clients are more and more asking for uh, SharePoint form for power apps compatibility with uh, mobile uh, platforms. And uh, uh, so basically we can make uh, office applications so that you don't need to really uh, open your computer, but you can instead uh, just uh, open a power app and uh, for example, do an, uh, do an uh, person onboarding request or fill in any other form uh, or like trigger any other action from your phone. Uh, and also there is increased uh, interest in detailed Power BI reporting. Again, Power BI reporting can, used, uh, can be used uh, in web platforms and also in uh, mobile platforms. Yeah, so what are the benefits? Uh, the benefits uh, are that uh, of this solution are that instead of um, like doing disconnected activities in in many many uh, Excel files, you are basically creating an ecosystem which consists of uh, of databases, uh, BI tools, and if needed, also Power Apps, uh, Power Automate. Um, this solution is also very secure since permissions are managed through um, through enterprise directory, and it, it is also possible to define a very strict permission policy uh, for for uh, such solutions. And uh, of course, um, like one of the main benefits of of such technologies is that you can create standardized and reusable uh, um, best practice based. Uh, uh, models, best practice based uh, like templates and tools uh, in order to save your time uh, and uh, don't don't create tools or databases uh, from scratch each time 
when you need to actually maintain something for for a certain project needs. So yes, and um, on the, right now on the screen you see some sample of how it actually uh, works in in uh, project management office in this case, but of course it can be used to to automate processes in any any office work. Uh, so as I mentioned before, three uh, there are basically three components, uh, which are, of course uh, first of all are cloud-based PMO data models. Um, mostly we use SharePoint lists for storing the data. And then we have uh, automation templates, which are mostly Excel business intelligence. And uh, we have uh, Microsoft Power Platform features. Uh, that would mean Power BI visualizations, uh, Power Apps and uh, applications and Power Automate uh, process flows and uh, automated emails. Um, so on uh, this slide, you can see how how the interaction happens. So basically, as you can see on the screen, the main component is really a data model, uh, which is uh, not not always uh, that easy to understand. So um, basically, uh, you should understand that the data model itself is just uh, it's just uh, like a source for everything else. So by actually opening a SharePoint list and just taking a look, a look at it, you will most likely not be able to see what you need, but it is still uh, the core, um, uh, like the core um, technology, which, which is then used for um, everything else. So basically you connect uh, these data models then to Excel or Power BI to either process or visualize the data. You also could use um, Power Apps and uh, Power Automate to perform uh, certain certain interactions with data. So the key here is uh, data. And actually, um, designing designing a data model which would fit your project specific needs uh, is uh, the most important thing in in uh, managing such solutions. Also, there are uh, many options of integrating your data model hosted either, either on SharePoint, such as this um, example uh, you see, or Dataverse with uh, external systems, such as, for example, uh, data from Jira or data from SAP uh, or any other uh, raw data which you, which you get from external system. Yes, so on this slide, you can see uh, some samples of uh, what could be the real tables in, in a office work. For example, people roster, a table which contains uh, people and people information. Then we have contract tracker containing uh, contract information, uh, rate card tracker, which contains uh, um, time and material rate cards that would say, uh, say uh, if you are invoicing uh, people to the client, you, you then use this um, rate card tracker as a reference database for storing um, data as per contract terms. And then there could be like financial structure table, which uh, would uh, display, display contract entries from financial perspective. Uh, and then invoice tracker is uh, actually where you store invoices, invoice breakdown tracker where you store breakdown information on invoices. Um, for example, how many hours did you invoice per, per certain person per certain invoice? Um, yeah, so that's how it looks like um, uh, as a screenshot sample. So on the screenshot, you see a SharePoint list. Uh, with the SharePoint form. Um, I will also show after we are done with the presentation, I'll also show some real uh, examples by opening SharePoint actually. So then we have um, Excel automation tools. So what could it be? It could be a batch invoicing platform 
which uh, basically populates data from the database. Uh, for example, if you are uh, using uh, time materials invoicing, it would then load um, load um, person rates and the other attributes uh, by you just providing uh, like a person name or a person ID. So you just basically how it how it works you. Basically, just enter a name and uh, amount of hours, and uh, the rest of the data is then loaded automatically from uh, the database. Um, in in the same way, we, we can also connect some like many other automation tools, such as, for example, uh, expense analysis platform, financial reporting platform, and so on. Uh, yes, so that's uh, how that's a simple. Uh, sample how it looks so you can see power query editor actually some data modeling in in power pivot and also um, displaying data in power pivot on the screen and then the last but not least uh, power platform it allows you to create um, dashboards to visualize data for example, to see an interactive report of how, how much did you invoice per certain person or any other uh, key, key performance indicators that you would like to see from your project. Uh, we have Power Apps forms, which allow you to submit um, requests on the go, for example. Then we have certain automation processes also run through Power Automate, such as automated emails and automated process flows. Yeah, so that's how Power BI dashboard could look like. Again, this is just a sample. There are many, many modification options in there. And, also, and some samples of um, Power Apps uh, forms and Power Automate uh, automated email. So that was the presentation, uh, but now I want uh, to show you actually some samples um, from uh, our use cases, so to say. Some sample databases. So, for example, as you can see on the screen, People Roster, and it has connection to rate cards and um, projects. In this case, then we have rate card reference table, which contains rate cards, uh, contract tracker, which contains contracts. We have financial structure. This is um, contracts from financial perspective. Uh, then we have invoice tracker, uh, invoices that we issued and uh, invoice breakdown tracker. Uh, this is a mapping of uh, hours that we invoice against uh, invoice. So these were some samples on SharePoint lists. Um, then uh, moving, moving to Excel. So how it works in Excel, basically to load this data into Excel, if you uh, have a blank report, you need to go to get data. Uh, from uh, other sources from SharePoint list to load data from SharePoint. I will not go into too much detail. Uh, you may, uh, if you are interested in the topic, you may ask, uh, you may watch uh, materials on YouTube, for example. You just need to type in Power Query or Excel Power Query, and then there are a lot of tutorials available. But you can see that um, if you go to on, in Excel to data, get data, there are multiple options to load data from different data sources, including uh, including SharePoint, including uh, SQL Server and uh, Web and uh, Excel and other databases. So uh, once you load the data, you can model it actually to, pr to produce, um, for example, Power Pivot or uh, just some automated uh, raw data with Power Query, so for example, uh, as, as seen below, uh, as seen on the screen. So that was about Excel. So Excel is, is uh, has many use cases still, but uh, nowadays it's uh, it's uh, it's used as a tool to get data from databases, and you can actually use it as a tool to also maintain databases. 
um, still this functionality is uh, way more powerful if you compare it with uh, with um, uh, regular Excel functionality as an office tool, since this uh, new uh, business intelligence functionality allows you to uh, to get uh, perfectly consistent data. So if you have designed your uh, office database properly, there is basically no room for error, um, which is not the case if you are just uh, storing data in Excel. There is always a room for error if it's just stored in Excel. And in Excel, it's also very difficult to maintain any like large data sets. And uh, this uh, takes a lot of time, but relational databases, on the other hand, uh, you store data uh, which are related to people in a people table. You basically store rate cards data in a rate cards table, and in, in that uh, in that way, it um, gives you a very professional environment which has the same principle the same operating principle as uh, like professional IT databases. So it gives you uh, perfect data consistency if designed properly, which is uh, actually what we need if we are working with uh, financials, if we are working with uh, invoicing or things like that. So that was about Excel and Power BI. Uh, Power BI, as you can see on the screen, so there is it is a Power BI app, just some sample visuals, basically, uh, Visuals are interactive, so it means you can filter filter details and the data will change. Also, um, yeah, so of course, uh, visuals that I'm currently showing are kind of basic, but still. So basically, the idea is that you uh, select a certain attribute and it uh, interactively changes data in your report. Also, uh, there are different, uh, different. Um, like uh, sheets available or tabs just as an Excel, but it is all, uh, if you're using Power BI service, it is all hosted on app.powerbi.com, which is Microsoft uh, Azure cloud environment. So the main benefit is that these re reports are refreshed automatically. And if you update uh, your database, um, you can set for example, refresh a report to refresh up to eight times a day and will just automatically update data here, which is basically just visualizing the data. And then, um, yes, so uh, talking about power apps. So to make uh, power apps, uh, you may visit uh, make the powerapps.com portal. This is needed to create uh, those. Um, uh, large power apps, uh, for example, canvas apps, uh, model driven apps, and uh, and uh, portal apps. Um, but uh, of course, you can build power apps forms from SharePoint. Also, if you go, uh, if you just um, like want to uh, create a power apps forms, it is also possible to do it from SharePoint. So, and then some, okay, Power Automate, again, uh, it's a cloud site, just as with Power Apps, you can create the workflows uh, based on certain, like many different connectors to automate processes. Again, I will not uh, cover it into detail. So if you're interested, you may just browse Power Automate, uh, go to Microsoft uh, site to check more details. Uh, yeah, virtual agents, as mentioned, this is for creating chatbots uh, on, like, to automate certain uh, business processes, uh, mainly related to customer service support. So I would say that uh, mostly, mostly that was it for today. So hopefully you were able to get some introduction to the technology. Of course, we cannot cover. Uh, how it works in one hour. So uh, we cannot go to, um, too much into technical details, but I hope that uh, with uh, today's lecture, uh, you probably got some interest to explore the topic um, and to watch some additional trainings and to try it out at some point.
Thank you very much. Okay, I see a question. So uh, you uh, you check Teams and could not find the uh, app Dataverse. So it is not uh, an app actually. Um, you you can um, like so to to use Dataverse in Teams, you should add Power Apps into Teams. So you basically need to open Teams, find Power Apps, and then through Power Apps you can access Dataverse. So um, Power Apps um, is um, specifically integrated into Microsoft Teams to to interact with uh, uh, Microsoft Teams as an ecosystem of um, of uh, Power Apps. So you need to actually add Power Apps to Teams, not Dataverse, and uh, Dataverse will be available within Power Apps. Okay. So are there any more questions? Probably. If not, uh, then thank you very much for today's lecture, and hope hope it was a, I hope it was interesting to you. Thank you. Bye.